Hey, good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is Wednesday night, 7.30 time for our MidConnect Bible study. I tell you what, we are so thankful that you're joining us this evening. If you'll do something for us, will you share this broadcast with a friend, coworker, family member? We want to continue to just get the word out there and um, get deeper in His word as we grow together. Yes. Amen. That's what we're all about, encountering God mm -hmm. and experiencing life. Amen. And so many times people say, well, God just doesn't speak to me. Well, are you, are you in his word? Right. Have you been in his word? Because if you'll get in his word, his word will speak to you. The written word, the logos of God's word. Something we started last week, we talked about betrayal. Mm -hmm. We talked about there is times in our walk with the Lord that we're going to be betrayed. Mm -hmm. We understood from last week's teaching that betrayal doesn't come from God. Mm -mm. It comes from the enemy. Right. And what God will do by us making the right choice, by acting according to the will of God, the word of God, then God is able to turn that situation around and it becomes better in our life, not bitter. Amen. Because the fact is this, when you and I get offended, we're either going to get bitter or we are going to get better. better. Mm -hmm. And what we really want to give you this evening is how to forgive in three simple steps. Yes. How to forgive in three simple steps. If you have your Bibles, turn with us this evening to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 31 and 32. I'll be reading out the New King James and then Crystal, you read out the New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. But Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Amen. And it reads in the NLT, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Notice that. Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger be put away from you. Mm -hmm. It is so important because if you've ever been hurt, then the ideal of forgiveness may seem impossible. Right. When, when we're offended, when we're hurt, the ideal of just forgiving people seems impossible due to how deep the hurt may be. True. And what he's letting us know here in Ephesians chapter 4, that no matter what takes place in your life, don't allow the root of bitterness to take place in your spirit mm -hmm. and in your That's heart. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we say in your heart, we're not talking about that which beats and puts the blood throughout our entire body. We're talking about our spirit man. Right. Because remember, we're spirit beings first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And so... It's important that when we're talking about dealing with forgiveness, because forgiveness has to be forgiven. Right. It has to be released. Mm -hmm. So the very first step that you and I must take in order to forgive others is we have to admit that there is a problem. Right. I don't know how many times people um, will be in a conversation, a situation, an offense is brought, and then the other party will say, are you okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. I can handle that. But down deep, they're not okay. Mm -mm. And what happens, Crystal, is if that individual continues to keep it suppressed mm -hmm. and doesn't admit that there is a problem, right? that I've taken the bait of offense, mm -hmm. and now there's an offense in my life, and if I don't acknowledge the offense, mm -hmm then there's no way that I'm going to be able to receive healing and wholeness in my life. Right. I don't know why, but so many of us, you know, I know I've done it in my own life where, oh, no, it didn't bother me. There's like this tough guy we put up. Mm -hmm. But on the inside, it's tearing us apart. Right, right. So the first thing we've got to do, we have to admit that there is a problem. That's right. If you and I are holding on a grudge against anyone for anything, no matter how seemingly unforgivable, then acknowledge that there is a problem and deal with that problem. That's right. It's important for us to admit that we are hurt or that we are angry. Mm -hmm. Now, don't admit that to others. Right. Don't, don't turn into a gossip session where you're um, 
telling everyone around you or you're taking it to social media. I mean, that's we see that in, that, in our day and hour we live in today. So many people are so bold behind mm -hmm. a keyboard mm -hmm. or on a phone. Right. But if you confront them, they, 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 they start to step back. Mm -hmm. don't, don't do that. Don't take um, your anger or your hurt to others and pollute their ears and their spirits. Right. I don't know how many times I've dealt with people, whether it's in counseling or in church or in family, that something happens and a hurt takes place, an offense takes place, and then people start choosing sides. Yeah. And what happens is people come in to the conversation not knowing, because there's always two sides of a story, not knowing what was actually said. Mm -hmm. They're only hearing what was perceived. Right. And then automatically they begin to take sides and join forces with someone that is working with a spirit of bitterness, hurt, or anger. Right. And that does not bring the righteousness of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. So we have to, as individuals, that when we are offended and when we're hurt, we have to admit, you know what? I'm hurt. Mm -hmm. I'm angry. I'm upset. We have to admit that in our prayer closet. Yes. Don't admit it to others. Don't Because I don't want to pollute others and, and, and begin to change their perspectives of how they may mm -hmm. see other, other pe people. Other people. Yeah. And so I want to make sure that what I'm doing is I'm getting alone with the Lord and I'm, I'm admitting that, you know what, mm -hmm. I'm hurt. Right, because really when you're doing that, when you're getting with other folks and talking and sharing, you're really not dealing with forgiveness at that point. You're really, it's a trick of the enemy. You're really not releasing forgiveness. You're just venting. Most definitely. And sometimes we do need a safe place to vent, but not to the whole world, not no, to your whole friend group. And that's a good point. <laughs> be very careful who you're venting to. Yes. You yes. know, it, because you could be venting to the wrong person that's not going to instruct you. Correctly. And hey, you need to you need to forgive them. Mm -hmm. No, they may they may join forces with you and say, well, yeah, I can't believe that. And most of the time, that's what you're really seeking for. That's what that flesh is really looking oh, for. Oh, most definitely. Who can I get on my side yeah. and make this Almost like I've got to have this army with me. To, That's right. To validate my case. That's right. Or I'm not going to forgive them. Right. Until they first confess that they were wrong. Right. Well, you could wait an entire lifetime mm -hmm. and it never take place. That, that's very true. See, forgiveness is not so much for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. For you. Mm -hmm. You are releasing yourself. Mm -hmm. Because how many times we place ourselves in a jail cell. Right. Spiritually speaking. Mm -hmm. And we allow bitterness, hurt, and anger to mm -hmm. keep us there while the ones that did the offense keep walking by and enjoying their life. Right, right. And so if we're going to experience freedom, the very first thing that you and I must do is that we must admit that forgiveness is necessary. Right. And forgiveness is doesn't mean that now I have to trust you again. Right. That you have to be a part of my world, especially if something has been so wrong that it's it's severity, but um and you know danger or mm -hmm. whatever. Right. You know that doesn't mean you have to befriend them and, and make them a part of your world. That just means you release. That's right. You know that's what we said last week when we talked about betrayal. Is that it doesn't mean we have to trust them as you just mm -hmm. said. You know it's what we're doing is we're releasing so that healing and wholeness can be brought in our life. Right. Because remember, unforgiveness attacks the body. Yep. Unforgiveness attacks the mind. Mm -hmm. There is so much sickness in our land today because of the spirit of unforgiveness. Right. Bitterness, anger, resentment, hurt. It's a seed that's mm -hmm. been planted there that we've allowed the enemy to plant there. And what it's been planted, if we, if we don't go right to forgiveness, that's right. then what happens is when we revert to telling others, getting people on our side, we're watering the seed of bitterness and mm -hmm. anger in our life, and it will produce a harvest. Oh, yeah. A harvest that you and I do not want, mm -mm. but it will produce a harvest. That's right. So the first thing that you and I must do is that we must admit that forgiveness is necessary. Yes. Don't, be, don't try to be the tough guy, the tough gal. And say, oh, it doesn't bother me. I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. No, admit that you're hurt. Admit mm -hmm. that you're angry. And then begin to admit forgiveness and release the forgiveness so that you can mm -hmm. step towards freedom. That's right. The second step 
to forgive, pray and release the pain. Mm -hmm. Pray and release the pain. Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, but when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Mm -hmm. So take your decisions to forgive to God. That's right. Pray and commit before the Lord to forgive, to let go of the offense. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the first step is that we must admit that there is a problem. Mm -hmm. Second thing we've got to do is we've got to pray and release the pain. Mm -hmm. Release it. How many times we carry the pain of unforgiveness, the pain of hurt, and we go, week after week, month after month, year after year, mm -hmm. and we've never released it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's important because it's not until you and I release the pain that God can bring healing. Mm -hmm. He says, right. take upon me, mm -hmm. come unto me, all you that are heavy, heavy laden, laden, and I will give you rest. There's a rest that God wants his believers to walk in. Amen. But what will happen is if you take the bait of Satan, the bait of offense, the bait of hurt, and you hold on to the pain, then what happens is now you begin to have not only a bitter spirit, but now you have a critical spirit. Oof. So many times I've seen people that have a bitter spirit have a critical spirit. Yep. So now if I have a fence with you, when I come into your presence, I'm only going to come with a spirit of criticism. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to watch everything you do, everything mm -hmm. you say. Mm -hmm. And the enemy has a way of letting us hear only what our flesh wants to hear. Yes. So now, because we have this bitterness and hurt and anger on the inside, we come with a spirit of criticism, and all we're doing now is criticizing the party that has offended us. Well, I think, too, it also begins to leak out in, in your everyday life. You, know, you can be at the store, you can be mm. in a restaurant, yes. and you're, because you've allowed this to just germinate and develop nastiness, Yeah. Um, you're, you know, you're short with your waiter or waitress. You're short with the person checking you out the store. You're you know, miserable. You're, you, yeah, you're, miserable. you're just miserable. Yeah. And so that's when we're saying that you're the one that's held in bondage by it. And the other person's just going on doing whatever. And here you are a miserable person and you're causing everybody else to be miserable around you. Where if you would simply release it and let God turn it around for you. Because he says, I will make your enemies be at peace with you. That's right. And what happens is, you know, the old saying is, hurt people hurt people. Yes, and it's and true. And what happens is the reason that they're hurt is because, number one, they haven't admitted the problem. Mm -hmm. And then number two, because they haven't released the pain on the inside. Mm -hmm. So when we carry that pain, just like you said, then we go around, not only are we living in misery, but now we're going around, we're hurting people with our words and our actions because we haven't released the pain that has taken place on the inside. It's so toxic. It's very toxic. It's poison. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to release. We've got to pray and release the pain. And, and it's important for us to do that. And we've got to get in a habit of praying and releasing yes. it in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's not meant for us to hold on to. Because mm -mm. if you hold on to it, you'll dwell on it. That's right. And whatever you dwell on, you will be. Out of the abundance of the mouth, mm -hmm. the, out of the abundance of the heart, the, the mouth. mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is, as a man thinks, so is he. Right. So if we keep dwelling on that pain and that hurt, then we have allowed that pain to go into our heart, into our spirit. Mm -hmm. And now the only things that we're speaking is that we're speaking negative things, hurtful things, mm -hmm. because we have not dealt with the pain on the inside. That's right. I mean, we want to encourage you this evening that whatever you're going through, if there's pain on the inside, tonight's the night that you pray and you release the pain in the name of Jesus. You don't have to go another day being down and out, right. bitter and upset and angry. You can release it in the name of Jesus. You can begin to pray for that which has offended you and release mm -hmm. them and receive the freedom. Jesus said that I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more, more abundantly. abundantly. So yeah. life is given to us, but we have to make those right choices to walk in the abundant life that God has given us. Yes, I also want to say this. Sometimes, you know, you truly will have it under the blood, but 
sometimes the enemy, he likes to just see if you really have it there and you're going to choose oh, to keep it most there. Definitely. And I have been tested in those areas. Yeah, things will and come up yep, like, oh, have you like, really forgiven them? Yeah, and before you know it, I mean, when you're just not even thinking about it and you're rehearsing some things in your head from past and, it's true. you know, you're just sitting there and you're like, you know what? I'm going to give them the what for. And it's like for 10 years ago right. that you've had under the blood and prayed over and you're like, whoa, put on the brakes. Wait yeah. a minute. Uh-uh. Devil, Jesus and I have got this under the blood. Right. It's it's no longer to be. It's forgiven. It's water under the bridge. It's like a possum that plays dead and all of a sudden comes yes. back to life. Yes. So it's also a choice. It is. It's always it's always it, a choice. It's always a choice. Yeah. That's the thing. It's a choice. And to keep so, it there. So many times we say, Oh God, take it from me. Oh God, take it from me. No, you choose to release it. That's right. In the name of Jesus. That's right. You choose to pray forgiveness mm -hmm. and, and, and release the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You choose to make the right choices. You choose. It's your choice. It's our That's choice right. whether or not we're going to walk in, the, in, in God's word, in the will of God. That's right. Last thing this evening, step number three, to forgive, remain focused. That's good. Remain focused. Mm -hmm. Matthew 18, 21 and 22 says, Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Mm -hmm. 70 times seven. You and I have more opportunities to forgive the person who has hurt us. That's right. We have so many opportunities to forgive. And so when past offense come to mind, say no in the name of Jesus. That's right. Just like what you said, mm -hmm. when the enemy tries to bring those things up, those old hurtful situations, those old offenses, mm -hmm. you recognize that, first of all, this is of the enemy. That's right. And you say, no, in the name of Jesus, I forgive that person. That's right. Would you try that this evening, that whatever you're experiencing, maybe you're holding something, would you right now begin to speak words of life? Yeah. Would you begin to say those words? I forgive so-and-so. Yeah. I forgive so-and-so. As you do that, Healing is taking place right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Recognize Jesus. that bitterness and anger is of the enemy. Amen. And understand that you can walk in peace, Amen. that you can walk in freedom. Mm -hmm. You have to choose to be able to remain focused. Yes. So when those past offenses come, because like you said, you mm -hmm. may go a couple of weeks, even months, or even a year and think, oh, everything's good. I've, I've done, released them, given them back to Jesus. I've forgiven them. And all of a sudden something comes up, one text, one phone call, one visit. And the next thing you know, those old feelings start coming up. Mm -hmm. And you have to rebuke in the name of Jesus and say, no, no, no. Because what that is, it's an indication of whether or not you've truly released them. Right. The enemy, you know, he loves to dig up your past and your old hurts, wounds, whatever. I mean, anything from your past, he loves to dig it up Most definitely. and try to present it. And you know what? That's the only thing he has going for him That's was right. his past. That's right. And if you choose to dwell in your past, Jesus has said, you know, God said it's in the sea of forgetfulness. It's done away with. You're yes. a brand new person. All of that's done, it's, and if you have truly walked in forgiveness, it is done and dealt with, and you need to keep it there. That's, that's why you've got to remain focused and realize when the enemy comes to cut him off quick. Also, too, when we're talking about remaining focused, Ephesians 4.32, and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, right. even as God in Christ forgave you. So we have to remind ourselves, wait a minute, Christ has forgiven us. Right. To much is given, much is required. That's right. So because Christ has forgiven us, I have to stay focused and realize, you know what? In when I was messed up, when I committed offenses against God, God sent his son in this world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's right. And so because of that, the love of God, the love of Christ, Christ forgave us. Amen. And because of Thank that, you, we are to forgive others. Amen. And so... We just want to encourage you this evening as we've been talking about betrayal and offenses. And, you know, forgiveness is not mystical. No. I it's like not that. mystical. Nope. It's not something that's unattainable. Mm -mm. Forgiveness is something that you and I can give and release 
in Jesus' name. That's right. We can forgive the person who has hurt us, and we can walk free from the pain and the anger Amen. that came with that offense. Yep. We're not bound. You're not bound by the offense unless you choose to be bound. That's right. You can be set free in Jesus' name, and you do that by admitting that there's a problem, by praying and releasing the pain, mm -hmm. and by forgiving those who have offended you and hurt you and remain focused. That's right. Remain focused. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we praise you and we thank you for this evening. God, you know every situation that we're speaking to right now. And I just ask right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that healing and breakthrough would take place in yes. people's lives. Thank you, Father. Those that have been bound by anger, bitterness, and offense, Father, I pray that tonight they release the pain in the name yes, of Jesus. Lord. God, that they'll remain focused, that no matter what's happening, God, that they'll be um, focused on you and your word. And Father, I pray for those that maybe have suppressed the anger and the mm -hmm. hurt and the offense and have tried to toughen it out. Mm -hmm. God, I pray this evening, Lord, that they would finally come around to admitting that they're hurt and that they're broken. Yes. And Father, we release it unto you and we walk in your freedom and your liberty in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen. Encounter families, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Don't forget this coming Sunday at 11 a.m., you're not going to want to miss being here at the Encounter campus. We have um, a word for you. Mm -hmm. So many incredible things taking place amen. here. We just came off an incredible weekend oh, with our unique yeah. conference here with our, our youth and young adults, and we also had... Um, Bishop Rob Bailey with us this past mm -hmm. Sunday with, and his wife Crystal. And man, just had an incredible weekend. Yes. And yes. so there's so many um, incredible things. Keep using the word incredible. <laughs> but there's so many incredible things that's happening here at Encounter. We just want you to be a part of it. So be here Sunday morning, 10 a.m. for Sunday school or 11 a.m. for our Sunday morning worship. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. Yes. Release the pain in Jesus' name. Yes. And remember, we are Encounter Strong. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to give into this ministry, there are three ways to give. You can stop by the church Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can mail it to 12240 Five Mile Road, Fredericksburg, Virginia, 22407. Or you can give online at www.encountercog.com forward slash give. Once again, thank you for joining us.